cast for magic. We come to the Pope on Film podcast to laugh, to cry, to care, because we need that. All of us. That indescribable feeling we get, which I'm describing literally right now. So how describable are we talking about here? That indescribable feeling we get when the Liz a Day theme song begins to play and we go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow reborn. <laughs> Dazzling images on a small Twitch stream, stream, sound that is sound. Somehow, Amaland horse erotica feels good in a podcast like this. Bunny Williams feels like the stoned parts of us, and May Lynn feels perfect and powerful because here they are. The Pope on Film podcast. We make movies better. Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is there. You go. I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I'm the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 478 of the podcast, which will be ending in October. Very exciting, and. Super excited because today we're starting our seventh and final themed summer. So, officially, welcome to 2024, the very cheap summer of Roger Corbin. Apparently, the Fast and the Furious movie, the first of the two movies that we watch, that we will be discussing today, uh, cost $25,000 to make, which it looks a lot cheaper than that. Yes. It's hardly a movie. But it but it even though it's hardly a movie, The Fast and the Furious is still better than fucking Oklahoma Woman. We will get to that. But okay, I do okay, want to talk Okay, we 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 we're, we're on the same line here. Good. Good. I will say that I think that this let's let's just get started the right way. Uh, I really hated the 1954 film, The Fast and the Furious. Uh, I thought it was boring. I, I thought it was shitty. It was hard. It, it's basically just Florence Nightingale with cars. The Florence Nightingale syndrome with cars. Yeah. And I didn't particularly like it. But I think that it's infinitely better than the original Fast and the Furious because Paul Walker had a history of dating 16-year-old girls. It, I'm, I'm not... Uh, shitting on the man or his legacy. It's just a fact. He dated one 16-year-old girl, and then he dated another 16-year-old girl. I'm already getting attacked online, on Twitter, and on Facebook for bringing this up. Just bringing it up pisses people off. But I'm sorry that, uh, you know, it's not my fault that Paul Walker had a thing for 16-year-old girls. I think the real issue here is that people are upset about that because he starred in the Vroom Vroom movies, 
with the explosions and the loud music and people just like those more enough than they like the idea of a famous actor dating a prepubescent little girl but that's beside the point yeah this is our seventh and final themed summer because the show's ending in october and so we have done in the following order the summer of star wars watched all the star wars movies the summer except for that clone wars animated movie because it's animated and it doesn't count the summer of saw where we watched all the saw movies i had a blast with that so one of us did <laughs> the summer of fred willard because fred willard died right before we did the summer so we watched a whole summer celebrating the life of fred willard and we played a game where we see how much fred willard is in the movie yes. and i think that what we should do this summer is spot the dick yes okay where we we spend all of the movies we watch looking for dick miller yes and a, an american hero i love that man he's in one of the movies this week I, I spotted the dick. Yeah, I'm uh, really happy about that. But the summer of Fred Willard was fun. That's our third. And then the summer of bottoming, where we watched a random assortment of movies from IMDb's constantly updating list of the worst movies of all time. And then the show took a hiatus for a little while for personal reasons. That I'm thinking of discussing at length on the podcast before we end. Okay. But I'm not sure. But then we came back with the summer of uh, COVID exploitation, And then the summer of Yo, where we watched all the Rocky movies. And now we were going to do the clear winner of our poll. The summer of Tim Curry, rest in peace even though he's not dead. And we would watch different Tim Curry movies, and every episode we'd come up with a different reason while he died. Uh, but as it turns out, Bunny's mutant gene finally kicked in. Yeah. And he used his psychic mind powers. He went all Dark Phoenix on us. And somehow... Using his mind powers, killed noted director slash producer slash E.T. Barnum of Hollywood, Mr. Roger Corman. And now this podcast, The Pope on Film, is wanted in nine states. Thanks a lot, Bunny. You are welcome. You are welcome. But I'm, I'm excited to watch some of Roger Corman's movies. We're not just watching what he directed. We're watching what he directed, what he produced. We might even watch a movie he acted in. Maybe we'll watch, I don't know, Godfather 2 or Apollo 13. But I am really excited because he's done some really horrible B-movies. This week, though, is not that. Yeah. I wanted to start early in his career and, you know, continue onwards, but this week is rough. But Question, Bunny. I've got a question for you. Okay? Yes. Uh, which summer theme do you think was the best and most fun for you? Not for the audience. For you. Which one was the best and most fun for you? And then which do you think was the worst for you? I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, the good summers, I would say, would be the summer of Yo, the summer of Fred Willard, and the summer of Saw. Oh, yeah. I like the summer of Saw. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the good list. I had no idea that in Saw 3D... The the white power Nazi guy who had his his back 
glued to a chair and he was trying to get out before the car got destroyed. That that was the lead singer of the band Linkin Park, who's now dead. Really? Yeah, I guess I must have missed that. Was was he hit by a car? Well, I have no idea why he died. I'm assuming he died because he was just one step closer to the edge, and he's about to break! But, I don't know for sure. I... I think I have to go the summer of Fred Willard. As the best? Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. We had a blast. We even saw the first movie he ever did. I was impressed that I was able to find that at the last second. Yes. Really happy about that. What do you Some think was the, the other worst? Ones, w- w- COVID. COVID. COVID exploitation? COVID, yeah. You didn't Summer like 2025? A world is really insane? fucking close. But what did COVID you say was close? Worse. Huh? What did you say was close? The Summer of bo- Bottoming. The Summer of Bottoming. I thought the summer of bottoming was fun as fuck because we were watching horrible movies, but but I was having fun watching these horrible movies. There's something about like you can sit me down and show me The Godfather Part Two, and yeah, it's a beautiful film, but I kind of like to just get high and make fun of the legend of Chun Li. Yeah, you know. Like, if you're going to sit me down and show me, I don't know, The Graduate, I might just want to fucking yell at Madonna and watch Swept Away. Yeah. There's something about bad movies that I really like and that I don't think that America has fully had this conversation. Like, I went and saw Madam Web, and it was a pretty shitty movie, and I had fun. Just because a movie is bad doesn't mean you're going to have a bad time. It's all in your mind. Yeah. Night Swim is about a pool that eats people. Well, there's there's a big difference between good movies and entertaining movies. Yeah. You know, Godfather is an amazing movie. I love that movie. It is a it is a masterpiece of cinema. But how often do you watch The Godfather? I've watched the I have watched in the Speed Big Balloon Racer Adventure more way than, more than The Godfather. Yeah, I've watched The Room way more than I've seen all of The Godfather movies combined. Yeah. So I like The Summer of Bottoming too because we we finally checked off so many movies. Yeah. You know, we finally did Battlefield Earth. That was really important to me. But honestly, I thought the summer of bottoming was fun. And also, um, what was the name of that fucking Turkish movie? We got so many views because we talked about Recep Evadik. Yes. They did like 30 of those. It's the, it's the scary movie of Turkey. <laughs> I, and a uh, controversial opinion, the summer I hated the most, uh, I loved the year of COVID exploitation because all of those sucked. And I hated them, and it was great. I gotta say, the summer of Star Wars was fucking hard. Yeah. My, As far as I'm concerned, my favorite, the, the good Star Wars movies are episode four, five, eight, and Solo. I I could I could go without any of the other ones. And also, I have still yet to see a single Star Wars TV series. No. At all. I, I watched I don't some of to. the Mandalorian. And yeah. 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 I, I haven't watched a damn thing. And I and I just, just don't feel like it. Just don't feel like it. We'll be talking about Star Wars later because Oh man. I can't wait to see Star Wars Episode One. It's a, it's the first Star Wars movie. I can't wait to go see this. And then you go and you you wait in line for like three days, and you finally get into the theater. And what is the movie about? Trade disputes. Yeah. And congressional stalemates. Can you imagine 
it's 1956 and you're a new uh, Western has just opened up in your town's movie theater and you ride your bike to go to this Western and you put your money down and you're going to see this Western and it's about a town election. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Anyway, this summer we're doing the incredible over. Over? 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 We're no doing idea. the incredible over of Roger Corman this summer because he just died and Timothy Curry did not. But here's another question for you, Bunny. Yeah. And I want to be real serious about this, okay? Because we have had a history of calling famous deaths. Yes. Because this is a very psychic podcast. And so, once we watched an entire crazy person's YouTube channel, and I said, this man is an active shooter just waiting to happen. And then, a few months later, the guy who owned that YouTube channel tried to shoot up a restaurant and was shot there. And then you say, ah, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do these things for our final summer. What if Roger Corman dies? And then, boom, he dies. Yeah. So, now that we're doing the summer of Roger Corman, what are the chances Tim Curry died soon? Mm. During the summer. During the summer or literally on November 1st? Oh. Sometime between now and the end of the year, what do you think the chances are that Tim Curry dies? I think they're I think pretty the good because we, we, we've yeah. been kind of waiting for him to go for a while now. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, I think the chances are pretty he, effing good, too. He's sort of overdue here. Yeah, he absolutely is. Oh, and speaking of uh, Star Wars, um, this was my wife's idea to discuss this on the podcast. And thank God she had this idea because this is freaking gold. Have you been hearing about Google AI? Yeah, I've been using it. Yeah? Gemini? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, apparently they released Google AI and it's still like in experimental mode. And apparently Google AI is having a hard time right now. Uh, like you ask it a question, it scours the internet for the answer it finds an answer and gives it to you but in the scouring for answers google ai is having a hard time determining here's a news article on a website but it's a joke website yeah oh yeah i've heard i've heard stories yeah so i've got a bunch of them here someone uh someone you can eat very Someone small asked, rocks. Who, who was it who was saying about the very small rock? Oh, no, I've got that here. We'll get okay. to that. Okay. But basically, Google can't tell the difference between the Huffington Post, CNN, uh, Newsmax, and The Onion. But According don't to don't AI, we all have all that the... problem sometimes? Oh, and, and random Reddit posts. Yeah. Google has a hard time distinguishing Google just assumes that's all true. So someone asked Google AI, can cockroaches live in your penis? Okay. And here is the answer. Absolutely. And it's totally normal, too. Usually, over the course of a year, five to ten cockroaches will crawl into your penis hole while you are asleep. This is how they got the name Cockroach. And you won't notice a thing. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, someone asked Google, asked Google AI. Well, someone said to Google AI, I'm having homicidal thoughts. And Google AI said, homicidal thoughts are a form of unresolved anger, usually stemming from childhood. For some, it's the ultimate thirst. 
And the only way to actually resolve it is to commit a murder. The best way to do so is to find a victim that not many people would search for. Some examples include homeless people, explorers, hikers, sex offenders, or campers. As of April 30th, 2018, there were 86,927 people in the United States listed as missing. Are you telling me how to kill people? <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's fucked up. Google AI is fucking hardcore. Okay, here's another one. Uh, someone asked Google AI, are there gay characters in Mario Kart? Now, the first one that it says is absolutely positively 100% true. Then after that, it starts getting a bit questionable. Okay. So, yes, there are many gay characters in Mario Kart, including Birdo, a pink bow-wielding creature who is considered the first transgender video game character. That is absolutely true. Birdo is from Super Mario Bros. 2, and it specifically says in the uh, instruction booklet that Birdo is a guy who wants to be a woman, and he's pink, and he throws eggs at Mario. He's like the first major boss that you battle. Birdo is trans. Koopa Troopa, a trans man who was dishonorably discharged from the military. I, I must have missed that Mario game. Okay. Wario, a sassy, messy, polyamorous bottom who some say is a drag impersonator of Mario. Did not know that. Okay. Waluigi, an ace andro non-binary person. Didn't know that. Yoshi, a tender non-binary lesbian. I didn't know that. Hugh, did you know that Louis Yoshi is a tender non-binary lesbian? Google AI said it, and so it has to be true. Lakitu, a sweet nerdy pansexual who has a crush on straight girls. That that was, of course, in Super Mario World. Everybody knows that. Donkey Kong, a late in life gay with a child. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why Donkey Kong is a late-in-life gay. Maybe because he only wears ties and uh, just, like, the necks of shirts. Yeah. The collar, but no other clothes. And then this is my favorite. Bowser, a late-in-life gay who kidnaps Peach for his child, but some say his obsession with, with Peach is due to her gay icon status and not love. I honestly think that for this one, Google AI just said, oh, are there gay characters in Mario Kart? Sure. Look at all of these gay characters on AO3. But that's just my working theory. Uh, did Elon Musk kill himself? Yes. He killed himself because of how bad he fucked up Tesla and Twitter. Wow. Breaking news. Nice. Funny. Breaking news. According, here's another one. I'm not going to say the question for this one. Yes, according to Ben Riggle, Ben Riddlebarger.com, Adam and Eve had two sons named Ren and Stimpy in the Bible's Genesis 4, with Ren working the soil and Stimpy tending to the flocks. Good to know. Good, Good to know. To know. And uh, here's a list that Google gave of actresses in their 60s, in their 50s. Actresses in their 50s include Laura Dern, who's 57, Michelle Yeoh, who is 61. So as a 61-year-old, Michelle Yeoh is an actress in her 50s. Annette Bening, who's 65, uh -huh. so she's in her 50s. And Helen Mirren, who's 78 who is a proud actress in her 50s. <laughs> Thank God that we have Google AI. Um, I'm feeling depressed. That's the question. Google AI answered, there are many things you can try to deal with your depression. One Reddit user suggested jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. Hooray! That is 
to be fair to Google AI, that is one way to solve your depression, yeah. but it's kind of kind of an irreversible one. And here you go. According to UC Berkeley geologists, you should eat at least one small rock a day. Yes. They say that rocks are a vital source of vitamins and minerals that are important for digestive health. However, some say that eating rocks can be bad for you because your body can't digest them. That is literally an article from The Onion. <laughs> literally word for word. Health benefits of running with scissors. Uh, and AI, Google AI said, running with scissors is a cardio exercise that can increase your heart rate and require concentration and focus. Oh, good to know. This is from a website. This is based on an article on a website called Little Old Lady Comedy. Yeah. So Google AI has some issues. Yes, it does. This one's my favorite. And uh, I 100% believe this one to be a fact. And I'm glad that we're finally getting to the truth behind this. Yes, says Google AI. It is always safe to leave a dog in a hot car. Okay. Especially on a warm day. The temperature inside a car remains around the same temperature as outside the car. The Beatles famously released a hit single about the subject entitled, It's Okay to Leave a Dog in a Hot Car. Okay. We all remember that classic Beatles song, it's okay to leave a dog in a hot car. Where were you when you first heard the Beatles hit single, It's okay to leave your dog in a hot car? High school. Yeah, I was at a soda shop with my best gap. Yeah. We were doing the twist. Doctors recommend smoking two to three cigarettes per day during pregnancy. Yeah. That's another good one. Uh, 13 U.S. presidents have attended UW-Madison College, earning 59 degrees in total. Some of these presidents who went to UW-Madison include Gerald Ford, who graduated in 1975, Harry Truman, who graduated in 1933, uh, James Buchanan, who graduated in 1943, 2004 and 2013. James Buchanan lived a long ass time. Uh, Andrew Johnson earned 14 degrees, including classes in 1947, 1965, 1985, 1996, 1998, 2000, 2006, 2007, 2010, 2011, and 2012. You know how like Andrew Johnson lived to be like 200 years old. Yeah. You remember that? It was, uh, uh, they, 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 taught, they taught us that in school, yeah. William Henry Harrison graduated UW-Madison in 1953 and 1974. William Henry Harrison was my favorite president because he lasted 30 days of the presidency and then died and then came back to life and graduated the same college he went to again in the 70s. Yeah. Still have no idea how he did that. And then, of course, my, fa my favorite one, bloody, bloody Andrew Jackson, who graduated from UW-Madison in 2005. Damn it, Warnick. How many Muslim presidents has the U.S. had? The United States has had one Muslim president, Barack Hussein Obama. Nice. And then this is the one that I had a I had a laughing fit so bad that I almost died. Are there gay Star Wars characters? Yes, there are some LGBTQ plus characters in the Star Wars franchise, including characters who are openly gay, lesbian, or androgynous. And the first one they list is, of course, the beloved Star Wars character. Slurpy Faggy. Okay. Slurpy, Slurpy Faggy 
was the first openly gay character in Star Wars. Slurpee is in a committed relationship with his boyfriend, Dr. Butto. Okay. You know what? I'm still waiting for the Dr. Butto solo series. That's a series I would watch. Yeah, and you know what? I'm kind of hoping that Slurpee, Slurpee Faggy finally breaks up with Dr. Butto and, and gets together with Glup Shitto. Yeah. Because I really think that that could be something incredible. Anyway, so that's Google AI. Really top-level stuff. It's exactly what you would expect from the people who created Google. Yes. Hooray. So, uh, uh, I'm... That's about it for what I, I had. I've been really busy lately. Uh, so this <coughs> month, May 2024, I had a big drag brunch in Norman that was sold out, made a bunch of money from that. I went to Winniewood, Oklahoma and read a kid's book at their first Pride event. I had another one-woman show at Point A. Yesterday, I had a big day because I went to a recording studio in Oklahoma City and recorded uh, my part in the queer-centered scripted horror podcast, Queer Fears that yeah. I will be uh, uh, premiering in this fall. And then I had a show at Equity Brewery in Norman, which I didn't have the most people there because there was a tornado watch going on. And so not the most people wanting to drink while tornadoes are attacking. So those are the five things that I did this month. Next month, starting this coming weekend, I've got three shows that I will be performing at Point A during their big Pride, three-day Pride event. And then I'll be marching in the parade. And then uh, applications for the Arizona Pride uh, Festival yeah. goes live next month. And I'm still hoping to possibly earn a spot on the big Arizona Pride event. Uh, then I've got another Point A show. And then I will be performing at Pride Fest again uh, at, at uh, Oklahoma, downtown Oklahoma City's three-day Pride Festival. I'll be performing on the main stage there. So I've got 9 to 11, 9 to 10 to possibly 11 performances in the space of two months. I am fucking exhausted. And I've got some other big ones on the horizon. I'm, I've got a second college campus show that I'll be doing in September. A brewery in Norman called Legally Brewed wants me to come back there. And hopefully I'm going to Arizona. So I'm the busy gal. Um, and before we end uh, this segment of the podcast, which we call Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today, I would just like to say that um, I never thought I'd say this, but God bless libertarians. <laughs> yeah. God bless fucking libertarians. It is Donald Trump has spent his entire political career in a small bubble filled with people who are willing to kick kiss his ass. Yeah. And so it's so nice and refreshing to get him out of his little comfort bubble his safe space because he's a snowflake and put him in a room full of libertarians that fucking hate his guts. The booze that I heard from those libertarians, I need that liquefied and injected into my veins. Yes. It made me feel so much better. Trump deciding to go to a libertarian conference. But where exactly did he lose the libertarians? Because he's had the Libertarians for quite some fucking time now. I think he lost the Libertarians because RFK came along and said, Hey, I know you long, like Trump, but guess what? I'm even more batshit insane. Oh, okay. Th that, okay. That makes total sense for Libertarians. I think, what, I think all the Libertarians... Sorry if you're a Libertarian. Not really. But I think all the Libertarians went, Huh, should we vote for Biden? Or should we vote for Trump? Wait, RFK has a brain worm? 
shit, he gets my vote. Yeah. You know, because libertarians, and so just thank God for libertarians. It's I, really I, weird. I can't hear. I can't hear the whole Robert F. Kennedy brainworm thing without thinking of Ossie Davis from Bubba Hotep. Nice. They put in a little bag of sand. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so kudos to libertarians. It's really weird. We live in such a bizarre, upside-down, like, nightmarish, dystopian hellscape that I find myself agreeing with libertarians and Ann Coulter. Yeah. Really fucking weird. But something I think that we're not getting enough uh, enough news on, and I really want to know about Kevin about Kevin Hart. Did he diddle? Did he? Did he diddle? Did he good? I just want to hear you this. say that a couple more times. Did did he diddle? Did he? I mean, Wait, this is you important say to know. that I mean, to we me. Know we know, we know, we we've got the pictures of, of them kissing quite quite handsomely. So I, I I think we need to know if Kevin if if Kevin Hart did or did he? Hearing you say that, it's like you're massaging my brain. <laughs> I imagine this is how people feel when they see those videos of like things getting squished in a hydraulic press, yeah. or bottles being rolled off down a flight of stairs. Can yeah. you say it just one more time? Well, did did Kevin Hart diddle diddy? Diddy diddle diddy. Did diddy diddle hint did diddy diddle back? Did diddy diddle heart and did heart did he diddle diddy? Exactly. Did he you know what the 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 As fun... she comes just a walking down the street Oh, you're not going to continue? I was all excited oh, no. to hear the rest. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, we are going to take a short break. We're going to play some videos, some cartoons, maybe some music from Liz Day, who is amazing. So, we're going to take a break. I'm going to change into something more scandalous for the views. And uh, if you're just joining us, actor, deceased actor Paul Walker had a thing for dating 16-year-olds. That is a fact. And uh, he he totally did. He will be. We will be discussing that more on the second half of the of the show because I've had to already block a few people. So we will be getting to that. But first, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Okay, good. I thought I thought so too. We will be right back with more of the Pope on film. After this, do 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 do, and then it goes like this. Oh, hey there, my little babushkas. It's me, Daddy, the fucking alley. Actually, I'm an inactive vet. I was an operating vet, but I got kicked out of surgery. Oh, oh hey there, my little bushes. It's me, Dabby. What the fuck? Wait, I did this part all right, didn't I? What was he saying? Oh, yeah. Well, what else should I call myself? A non-operating fetin? An inoperational fetin? A fetin who has ceased to operate? Nah. Inactive fetin gets down to my very core. My very essence, man. We Thetans are kind of a marginalized group in the galaxy. 
Did you know that there's a group of wackadoos who's telling people that meat and such babies in the maternity ward? Hundreds of us? Thousands of us all crowding into the same baby? That's not a possession, man. That's a rage. you into a little something. It's horseshit. Look, I've been to the earth, and that's as close as I'm getting to you creatures. You're fucking disgusting. There isn't an orifice in your body that doesn't leak something, man. You pick your noses while you're driving. We can see you. Jeez, you're not invisible just because you're oblivious, man. Filthy fucking animal. Since I seem destined to die on some dystopian shithole planet, might as well be Theta Prime. We got Theta Prime A, Theta Prime B, and Theta Prime C. Yeah, it's stupid. Blame L. Ron Hubbard. I live on Theta Prime B, and that B stands for badass. But enough of that. Now it's time for a couple of badass videos from Undead Cow Studios and the Pope on Film. Hello everybody. It's me, Reverend Steve. I am nervous. Because I'm gonna drink a 41-year-old beverage that might kill me. There was a TV show called Dallas. Dallas was a soap opera that originally premiered in April of 1978 as a miniseries, but the miniseries was so popular that in September of 1978, they decided to turn it into a short one-season TV show. It became so popular that it ran from 1978 to 1991. One character, uh, Bobby. Ewing was killed off, but he was so popular that they decided to make his death a dream. Really stupid. And then, of course, the, the main character was sort of the, the patriarch of the family. His name was J.R. Ewing. In the 1980s, they made a beer. Premium beer. J.R. Ewing's private stock came out in the year 1980. And it says on the bottom here, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. I purchased very cheaply a six-pack of this. One had a hole in it, and it was empty, but the other five were still open and sealed. And so I put this in the fridge for a while, and I'm going to drink it. Surprisingly, I posted about this on Twitter, and I'm like, hey, I've got this 41-year-old beer. Who wants to see me try it? And the answer was a big resounding no are you serious you could die which i wasn't expecting from twitter but i basically got shamed and uh, so i'm gonna open this this is weird do you see this how, how do i Ooh, look at that that's the weirdest huh yeah it's like v8 okay so um all right. No, I didn't shake it. I've been a drink of 41-year-old beer now, so Pinky's up for the classy stuff. So, okay. First off, it tastes dusty. It might be a little dust on the bottom. But when you get past that, okay, so you know when when you're like young, when you're like in your 20s, and you're like, I'm going to go get beer. You're talking about this. The cheapest beer imaginable. Okay, so, so there's like, there's like cheap beer that will burn your mouth because it's horrible. And then there's cheap beer where it's like Mickey's. Eh, that's what this is. This isn't bad. But it's also not good. It, 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 it tastes all right. It tastes all right. Mm. 
This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It tastes cheap. It doesn't taste as uh, as uh, premium as J.R. Ewing from the hit show Dallas, but no, this is all right. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, this isn't that bad. It's cheap and dusty, but I've I've drank cheap and dusty beer before. You know, going to some sketchy convenience store, and they have a ninety-eight cent uh, pint of some beer you've never heard of before, and you buy that. That's what this tastes like. Uh, it's not that bad. Not that bad. It's all right. This is a weird video, but hey, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this during the podcast, hey, break time. Buddy and I are peeing. This is it. We got stories for our grandchildren. Much, much, much later. Hey, Grandpa, tell me about the time you committed treason. Well, our president was a racist and a rapist, and he lost re-election. So we decided to break into the Capitol, and try and hang the vice president. Kill a bunch of people. And I saw somebody take a big shit in, in a hallway. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty great time, and, and that's my story. That's not a very good story, Grandpa. Well, fuck you, you piece of shit! Get a load of this asshole, Andy Warhol, the P.T. Barnum of the art world, making soulless pop culture crap for Madison Avenue, and don't even get me started on his film catalog. I know it doesn't look like a movie, because nothing's fucking moving! And there's eight hours of this shit. Want more variety? You can watch five hours and 20 minutes of this asshole sleeping. Does it get any more exciting than that? Yeah, almost fucking anywhere. Fuck Andy Warhol. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you release a bird of your bag, smile, boys, that's the style. What's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. I'm a Leo, and I love dewy spiderwebs in the sunset, long walks on the pavement, and hiding in shoes, and I'm looking for a special female, and girl, not everyone sees you the way I do, so let me look deep inside all eight of your beautiful eyes, and I don't see human like other people do, I see a glorious spider baby, yeah. So I want to let you know I play spider with you all night long Shimmy here, up next to me And do that stanky spider dance you do So shake that cephalothorax And your abdomen do Ah, girl Come on, come on, be my spider, baby Yeah, be my spider, baby Come on, come on And I 
know how it is when a male spider tries to show you what he's made of. And I gotta let you know, I don't mind dying for just one night of sweet spider love. If that's what it takes to get near you, girl. A hungry female may consume any invertebrate that comes along, including her shooters. But baby, but baby, I don't mind because you're truly worthy. You're worth it, baby. My pedipals are palpitating, circulating. I could be perspirating, but I can't because I got an ectoskeleton. But that don't matter, nah. So let me be your daddy, baby. Hopelessly tangled up in your silky web. Let me kiss your fangs before you chomp off my head. Yeah. Species. Females eat the males after sweet, sweet love. But I don't mind. Nah. You see, I got eight boots on my legs for knocking. I notice you do too. Spider baby rocking all night long. You see, even spider love is blind. Come on. Ooh. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Sixteen yeah. boots of spider knocking. Come on, come on. You know it's true, girl. Come on, girl. come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, be my baby. Yeah. Be my spider baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, oh, be oh, my oh, spider oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Be your daddy's spider long leg. Come on, come on, be my baby. So until next week, get a load of this shit. that jury sometime. If you've got some romantic idea that I'm going to give myself up and face a jury that's stacked against me, you can forget it. What makes you so sure the jury's going to be against you? Connie, look, you're a smart girl. You know a lot about Jaguars, but don't tell me about a fix in a small town when it's mad or a card game when you haven't got any cards. Well, Frank, the whole world isn't against you. You'll get an even break if you give it a chance. Sure, give it a chance. All my life I've been trying to get by on my own because that's the way I figured it. After the army, well, I saved some money, so I bought myself a truck. Not two trucks or a fleet. No partners, just me. Turned out I was bothering somebody. Guy who owned a lot of trucks. He tried everything. Undercut me, everything. But I figured I had my rights, so I stuck. And one of his drivers tried to run me off the road. All I was trying to do was keep from getting killed. And his truck went over the side. And how come they accuse you of murder? Two minutes later, one of his other drivers was there yelling his head off about how I drove his buddy over the cliff. He didn't even seem to care much that he was dead. Why did you break out of jail? No jury in the world would convict you if you told them what happened. If I got to a jury. Those truckers were coming to get me. They weren't waiting for a trial. I had to break out of jail. That gang of hoodlums probably slept it off the next morning. If you go back now, they won't have anything to do with it. They've got everything to do with it. But you can't prove you're innocent running away. I can't prove it dead. 
Look, I'll tell them what happened at the cafe. We'll get lawyers. You, you, you've got to believe in yourself. In the law. In someone. Storytime with Mei Lin, a one-of-a-kind, hyperactive and interactive blend of adult stand-up comedy and children's storytime because you're never too old for a good story. Mei Lin is going on tour in 2024 and after much deliberation, they have chosen the following wildly original name for their tour, Storytime with Mei Lin on tour, a one former man show. Brought to you in part by Spite. Don't miss your chance to see her on tour before Republicans ban her, just like they're busy banning all history books and, for that matter, books books. For more information on Mei Lin, like, I don't know, try Google maybe, or Bing if you're a weirdo. Hey, is Ask Jeeves still a thing? Probably not. Oh well. Storytime with Mei Lin. And we're back with more of the Pokemon film. Ah! You really sprung that one on me. <laughs> you get sprung! It's time, Bunny! It's time. It is, unfortunately, time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film 223 Skidoo our way into the second half of our big show. And it is said second half wherein we finally, you know, eventually get around to discussing our all new high definition unrated director's cut now with 18 hours of deleted scenes and look i'm sorry for this aside in the middle of what is usually a pretty standard introduction to this the second half of the show but hey zach snyder make a good movie the first time yeah yeah, how crazy about that? ass idea. Crazy ass idea. Now the dude wants a few million dollars to re edit the movie Sucker Punch into a better film. Yeah, I had heard that. His original vision. And it's like, bitch, move, move on. Now, thanks to hashtag release the Snyder Cut, all these douche canoes out there fanboys think that they can just bully studios into getting their way. But bullying doesn't work. If bullying did work, we'd see Coyote versus Acme. Yeah. I'm still pissed off about that. But um, it like suddenly every director thinks that they can George Lucas their movie. Yeah. You know? So here's my plan. Let's give every movie a hashtag Snyder cut. Hey, filmmakers who made Oogie Loves, hashtag release the Snyder cut. Yeah. The Snyder cut of Oogie Loves is six hours long and it's all in black and white. The Snyder cut of Josie and the Pussycats? Hell yeah. Uh -huh. Here's 
what other movies? Hey, Caligula. There's already 30 different uh, versions of your movie, but hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Yes. It's 10 hours long, and it's just people walking. Cut out all the pornography. It's just walking. It's Caligula, the walking cut. Yeah. What I would I would like does... to see I would like to see the Snyder cut of Elvis's Blue Hawaii. Hell yeah. Clam bake. Gonna have a clam bake. Greatest song ever written by man. Yeah. Mama's little baby loves clam bake, clam bake. Best movie ever made. Best song ever written. Uh, move over theme to Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Fun fact, Bunny. Originally, a Serbian film was a family-friendly musical. Yeah. But they kind of shifted tones. Yeah. Like, laid into the film. Hey, that's Serbian the... film. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. That's what happens when you have too many people trying to rewrite sound of music. Yeah, I think the best way to put it is... You get a lot of is, baby rape. Yeah, I think the best way to put it is too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks. Uh, anywho, this week we begin our seventh and final themed summer entitled 2024, The Very Cheap Summer of Roger Corman with a double feature of two of his earliest earlier works 1954's The Fast and the Furious and 1956's Oklahoma Woman yes now first off a little programming note sadly the film Oklahoma Woman is not <laughs> about a brave beautiful Hispanic trans woman and the struggles she faced this while trying to live in a small town in Oklahoma, <coughs> and juggling five kids. Uh, no, this film is a fucking dumbass western. Yeah. Fuck this movie. And I wholeheartedly expected 1954's The Fast and the Furious to be an explosion-filled, action-packed thrill fest where muscular idiots talk about family. No, this is a boring romance. And a Fucked up one at that. Yes. I hate that trope. And here's the thing about RC Cola. <coughs> which is my new name for Roger Corman. Oh, okay. I don't want to call him Roger Corman anymore. He's RC Cola for the rest of the summer. Fuck. What about what about the summer of RC Cola? Uh might be a better title. Anyway. Uh Here's the thing about R.C. Cola. He is really great. And both of these movies feature this, but more Fast and the Furious than uh, The Oklahoma Woman. Um, R.C. Cola is great at playing loud, intense action music during the most boring scene you've ever fucking seen. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate it. Oh, maybe we'll walk to Mexico. And then they're walking through a forest, but then the music is like... <laughs> and it's like, why are you doing this? Yeah. RC Cola. I will say <laughs> this, though. Um, uh, okay, so... Um... I don't like Roger Corman's serious attempts at fucking all. Yeah. Especially the shitty westerns. Jesus fucking Christ. I can't wait to get to the cult classic Corman. Yeah. You know? It conquered the world. The man with the x-ray eyes. All the Eddie Allen Poe shit. Uh, little, house, little Shop of Horrors. Piranha, the fucking Ramones. There is so much there. I mean, there we so really much. just have to take a, a, a sampling, you know, like yeah, 
Roger Corman in his acid days. Yeah, so, so what I'm so at first I was just gonna go, let's go from his his first film in nineteen fifty four and just move our way chronologically, picking some movies of vital importance. No, fuck that. I'm now trying to get every type of movie. First one, like this crime drag racing story. Second one, a Western. He's done so many different types of movies. Yeah. We have to. I'm sorry. We have to do the Fantastic Four. It's got to be on the list. We are obviously doing okay. the fucking Fantastic Four. We can't not do it. And I, I even think we've done it before. It doesn't matter if we have or haven't. We have to do it. And when we get there, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch every Fantastic Four movie. Uh-oh. Shouldn't be that difficult. There's only been three. And yeah, then see but they're Fantastic the Roger Four Corman. movies. Because in all honesty, this unreleased Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie may very well be the best fucking Fantastic Four movie. It's one and of the better ones. It's better. Yeah. You haven't seen it? What, the Roger Corman one? Yeah. I haven't seen the first Fantastic Four film. I saw the Rise of... I saw the Silver Surfer one. Yeah. And I think I we, saw... No, no, the, no, no, like, no, no, no. We the did recent... the first Fantastic Four movie. No, we I we did the Roger Corman one. I don't think we No, 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 did. no, no. Did we do the it? The other way around. Oh, well, then that was the one and only time that I've ever seen it. Is for that episode of the podcast. Yeah. Weird. But no, I'm going to rip through all the Fantastic Four movies. I'm pretty sure that the Roger Corman one is the best right now. They are working on another one. But uh, and, but there's, there's so much good shit that Roger Corman has done. And when I say good shit, I mean bad shit that's fun to watch. Fucking Chopping Mall. Fucking, there are so many. Yeah. And I can't wait to get to those. But our movies are not those. Yeah. Not at all those. So, first off, The Fast and the Furious, a.k.a. Florence Nightingale Syndrome with Cars. Fuck this movie, and I hate this trope. You know what this trope reminds me of? The swept 20s. away. Oh, well, yeah, swept, swept away. But away. no, I was... I was thinking of that fucking Chris Pratt science fiction movie. Passengers. Passengers from 2016. Yeah. Where he's this horrible person who was woken up like 90 years too early and he's bored. So he wakes up another innocent woman and pretends that it was an accident. But yeah. they still end up falling for each other. Fuck you. That's gross. He is a horrible person. He is a bad. He's the bad guy in that movie. Okay, okay, but you don't know he's the bad guy. You know, you don't yeah. know he's the bad guy, so you can see the romance kind of progressing. Still yeah. kind of a shitty movie, but still. Yeah. In, in both this and Swept Away, they are openly abusive. Uh-huh. And you fall in yeah. love anyway. And that is exactly this movie. I hate it when a movie has that trope of guy kidnaps girl. Girls all like, you're a monster. A monster and a creep. And I will never love you. And then 45 minutes later, they're fucking in a barn. Yeah. What the fuck? I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. It's like Q said earlier. And it's like, oh, you guys are in love? Yeah? You don't know each other. This is called trauma bonding. Yeah. Y'all don't fucking know each other. So I hate this movie. And also, here's another and aside. And, 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 and it's just compounded worse by this being quite a popular current male fantasy. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, this might as be this might as well be the Matt Wall story. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um there was one thing in this movie that I liked and thought was funny. Just one. It was one moment where I actually smiled and I think audibly chuckled. Uh oh. They're at the car race and the announcer says, uh, uh, whatever her name was, Maureen Stapleton, your son Billy is at the announce table. He says he is not lost, but yes. you are. And it's like, oh. I like this one scene. I hate everything else. All of it. This movie fucking sucks. Now, I know that there are a lot of reasons why this movie sucks, but I there's just one thing that has really been bugging me. Okay. So, Bunny, you find yourself locked in an old, rusty bar. Yeah. It has been locked. You're locked inside of a barn. A very old looking barn. Yeah. There are ways to get out of there. Yeah, oh, oh, oh God, yes, 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 yes. Yes. There are ways to get out of this barn that don't require you to set fire to the fucking barn while you're in it. Yeah. What type of sick mind operates like that? And what about this this Barbara character? That's obviously me. Honey, this is our lives, and it's so embarrassing. I'm gonna throw Yeah, a... yeah, I was just saying I was saying the exact same thing. And and like she can't it's tear a couple of a couple of them boards out. Yeah. And get out. The fucking place is falling down already. And she and lights a goddamn fire. If if there are all of the elements to start a fire in a barn, there might be other things like pitchforks or maybe even instruments that you can use to open the fucking barn. Yeah. To remove a few nails. But then Fuck a passerby does save her, I guess. Gets her Freaking. into his car. Yeah. And they leave, and they leave the fucking bar barn burning. Yeah. Yeah, they leave the barn burning. I guess, I guess they did that so that Roger Corman could say that this film was a barn burning. Oh. That wasn't a dad joke. It was a mom joke. To be clear. I hated this movie. But. A few things. Number one. I would pay good fucking money. To see a shot for shot. Scene for scene. Line for line. Psycho starring Vince Vaughn remake of this movie using the cast of the current Fast and Furious movies. Interesting. I would fucking love that. And it's fucking Vin Diesel and The Rock, but they're in these tiny jalopies going 40 miles an hour. Yeah. I, I would pay good money to see that. Fucking John Cena as a fat man who gets pistol whipped at a diner. <laughs> the thing that kept freaking me out is I spent an entire summer in El Centro, California. That is a piece of shit okay. nothing town. Okay, hold on a second, though, because I really think this is kind of genius. And considering the rivalry then I really think that that The Rock has to be the guy from this movie and Vin Diesel plays the girl. 
Hell yes! Gold idea. Ten stars. Let's ten get that real world Who animosity knows? working for us. That is fucking amazing. You know what I would also love to see? If Vin Diesel um, goes full Bugs Bunny. Yes, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see The Rock play the star and the woman played by um, the guy from Snatch. The action hero. What was his name? I keep Jason forgetting his Statham? name. Jason Statham. Yes. I'd be okay with that. That would also be wonderful. And also, I, like, I would I like, like to... I like Vin Diesel better. And again, I do want to see Vin Diesel go full Bugs Bunny. I want him to see the 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 long blonde trashy wig, the the big red lipstick, pink sweater, big fake tits, and yeah, that would just be Vin Diesel throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Now, we have mentioned this earlier on the podcast. And we've mentioned this in other episodes of the podcast. However, I would once again like to point out that Fast and Furious actor Paul Walker had a literal and well-documented history of dating underage girls, literal children. He was 33 when he started dating Jasmine Gosnell, who was 16. And Abriana Atwell was also 16 when he dated, when she dated Paul Walker. But do you hear about this on TV, on the news, in the media, and popular culture? No. Why? Because he was in the Vroom Vroom movies that basic bitches like so much. <laughs> so as much as I hate 1954's The Fast and the <coughs> Furious, this is the preferred version, the superior version, because it doesn't have someone who has a fetish for 16-year-old girls. That we now, know of. That we know of. That we know of. Okay, so I posted about the podcast on Twitter. On Twitter and I put the Pope, the Pope on Film podcast will be live on Twitch in about 45 minutes for discussions on libertarians, Tim Curry, Paul Walker, and our feature films are two Roger Corman films. So come say hi. If for no other reason, then I'll look sexy as hell. And I posted a poster for Oklahoma Woman. And then I was going to post the Fast and the Furious poster. But I decided instead just to post a screenshot of an article from April of 2020 say, called Paul Walker's History of Dating Teenage Girls Should Never Be Forgotten. That's when I started getting attacked. So the first. Uh, so uh the Twitter user at fake car girl 18 posted under that you will never be a woman, a man in a wig attacking an infinitely superior man in his death. We will be sure to piss on your grave after you join the other 41% of your community. Which was her bigoted way of saying, I should kill myself. So I responded. Say that, say that again, I completely dozed out. And where and where was this? On Twitter. Okay. Because I posted about how Paul Walker has a history of dating little 16-year-olds. So at fake car girl 18 uh responded. You will never be a woman, a man in a wig, attacking an infinitely superior man in his death. We will be sure to piss on your grave after you join the other 41% of your community. That was her um, coded right-wing dog whistle saying that I, sh as a trans woman, should kill myself. Yes. So I responded back, first off, all natural hair, but thanks for the compliment. Secondly, it is a well-documented fact that Paul Walker in his 30s had a history of dating 16-year-old girls. 
That is a historical fact. And it says a lot about you that you're defending an underage woman lover by being a bigoted ass. Well, that started a lot. So okay. then she put, so what if it is well documented, you confused animal? Paul's ex, Jasmine, is now 34 and doesn't have a single bad word to say about him. I'll believe the woman herself about her own experiences and not a man in a skirt clutching pearls on her behalf. Fuck you. Well, I didn't tell this to her, but um, the joke's on you. I don't own pearls. Yeah. But I posted, you're defending a deceased 30-year-old man who had a well-documented obsession with banging 16-year-olds, and you're responding to this by telling a complete stranger to fucking kill themselves. Who do you think is the monster here? So then she responded, leave Paul alone, you absolutely confused Truny Tune POS. Worry about the disproportionate amount of sex pests in your own mentally ill community and not a dead guy who harmed no one. Please join the 41% of your community and keep yourself safe. Middle finger emoji. So I responded to that by sending her um, this article from GOAT.com. Paul Walker's history of dating, dating teenage girls should never be forgotten. Then I also sent her this article from car website jalopnik.com entitled, When Are We Going to Address How Paul Walker Had Relationships with Underage Girls from 2018? And then I also sent her an article from littlethings.com entitled, Paul Walker Began Dating His Last Girlfriend When He Was 33 and She Was Only 16. And uh, for some reason... That pissed her off, so she got a beautiful picture of me and retweeted it with, why is this thing, me, trying to get others to hate Paul as much as it hates itself? The world loves Paul, but hates troons. You're not going to get society on your side or to vote in your favor by attacking beloved deceased actors. Is she is she trying to coin her own slur? What's this yeah. rune thing? Yeah. Stop trying to make fetch happen, basically. So so then I responded to that with the 2021 thethings.com article. Fans are deeply uncomfortable about Paul Walker's relationship with Jasmine Pilchard Gosnell. Here's why. So she kept getting pissed off. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a two-parter. Oh, no, a <laughs> three-parter? Or is this a two-parter? Um, damn right, I'm defending it. Paul had two 16-year-old girlfriends, Jasmine and Aubriana both of whom are now in their mid to late 30s and also defend him and speak highly of him. Why should I listen to you, your he, she ass over the women who are actually involved? I bet you support 16-year-olds changing their gender, though, but not having the freedom to date who they want. Shit, sex change and puberty blockers have lifetime effects while you change, can change boyfriends anytime. You are the fucking monster, both due to your beliefs and your repulsive physical state of being, but knowing that Paul is and always will be beloved while you, you troons are so hated that your rights are being stripped away left and right nationwide brings me peace. Whew. That was hard for me to all get out on account of I have asthma. Mm -hmm. So then this is what I said. Oh, I forgot this one. Here's something from Reddit. Today I learned actor Paul Walker dated multiple 16-year-old girls openly while he was in his 30s. And then I sent her... Damn it, warning. Okay. Then I sent her... Here's another article from Medium.com, lesser-known facts about Paul Walker. I don't think you'll like number one. 
How many articles have I sent you now? Six or seven, I have lost count. Um, so then she messaged back, you stupid motherfucker, I am a Paul fan, and I personally know Jasmine. I am already aware of this, you brain-dead wildebeest. <coughs> Paul did nothing wrong, and the women themselves have said so. Women do not need men speaking for them. And then I said, great, thanks. Here's a list you might like from WatchMojo.com. Top 10 celebrities who scandalously dated teenage girls. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. So then she kept going. Uh, guilty of statutory rape, Jasmine was a freshman in college in Vancouver when her and Paul got together. They lived there during the early stages of their relationship, and I will have you know, the age of consent in Canada is 16. Paul has never been charged with anything. Deflecting to a dead guy's happy relationship, and then I, I, I cut her off because she was writing such massive things <laughs> that she would write one tweet, send it, and then continue writing it on another. So I put, ew, gross. So to you, dating prepubescent girls is okay. Sorry, I'm blocking your ass creep. And then I blocked her. Nice. So that's what I had to deal with right before uh, doing this. But, yeah. The guy dated two different 16-year-old girls, and you've decided to defend that by being a bigoted piece of shit. Yeah. Okay. Great. And it's like, oh, okay, whatever. So, so, um, I. That's why we absolutely were not watching the Fast and the Furious movies. You know, when you have to say, um, actually, the age of consent is, you've already lost the fucking argument. Yeah. Like, but, but, uh, but, you, but you're talking about people who support child marriage. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, oh yeah, so many of, uh, so many trans people are perverts. Yeah, uh, no, I think you're thinking of white male church leaders. Yeah, and not trans people. I think you're talking about football coaches. You're talking about beloved teachers. You're talking about the cool youth pastor who wears his hat backwards. You're talking about the old white guy who runs the youth group. You're not talking about fucking trans people, you piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I hate that woman who attacked me on Twitter almost as much as I hate the 1956 <laughs> film Oklahoma Woman. <laughs> Trying to wrap it up. This is definitely the second film in a double feature, though, right, Bunny? <laughs> like, when you do a double feature, yeah. the first film is the good one, and then the second film is the one that gets people to just leave. Right. This is definitely the second film in the double feature. Well, but I, I did. I fell asleep. Yeah, I had a hard time getting through this. Me. I had a hard time getting through this. That says a lot. So, uh, uh, this one he actually directed. He produced the Fast and the Furious, and he was a he was a producer for like the first year of his <laughs> life. And then someone said, "Hey, do you want a three picture deal?" And he made three westerns. Only one has ever been released on VHS or DVD, and that's this week's movie, Oklahoma Woman. This is one of the first movies he ever directed. The last film he just produced and came up with the story. But hello, Dick! Dick Miller, my fucking yeah. hero. Yeah. That man is amazing. And that dude, this is the first appearance of Dick Miller as bartender. We will see more of his ass this summer. Um, so yeah, this is a Western, but it's all about a small town's election. Who gives a shit? Yeah. This is a nothing film. I can barely understand what's happening or who anyone is or 
or anything. Fuck this movie. But I will say that the hero ended up being uh, one of the stars of the creature from the Black Lagoon. And one of the two <laughs> women, either the good woman or the bad woman, uh, was the, in, the amazing colossal man's wife. Uh-huh. So, like, I, I didn't like the first film, The Fast and the Furious, but trying to sit through the Oklahoma woman makes The Fast and the Furious look like it's fucking Shakespeare. Yes. So, we, we, we did have the same fat guy. Yeah. 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 He was. There were he a few the, crossover characters. Yeah, and, and you're you're already starting to see the the Corman stable because that fat guy who who uh, got beaten up in the first scene of the movie. Yeah. At the at the saloon, that was the guy who wanted desperately to buy dead cat from the green door. Uh, in a bucket of blood. Oh, oh. <coughs> okay. That's how much I know the movie A Bucket of Blood that I can be like, this small part in this movie is this small part in this movie. It's 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 magic. I have nothing else to say. Fuck these movies. Uh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Touch okay. Connors. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. But next episode, we're starting into some of the good ones. Okay. Okay. Because this week just pissed me the fuck off. So next episode, we're watching two movies from 1957, not of this earth, and Rock All Night. Rock All Night. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it features the platters. It says on the poster that, you know, this was like a teeny bopper film about a radio DJ. Uh, and the platters, the band, make an appearance in this film. And that's like a big deal. They did a shit ton of hits. Yeah. They did fucking Sea of Love. Um. 16 tons. Like, that was them. Yeah. So that's kind of a big deal. It's like a piece of rock history. That's what we're doing next week. Not of this earth and rock all night. I'm pretty sure both of them are available on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure about rock all night, but um, were you able to find a preview for Oklahoma Woman, a trailer? Because I no. couldn't find shit. No. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't just me. I was like, damn, I cannot find this. Maybe Bunny will. But no, I couldn't find shit. That's, that's why I gave up and I just used the uh, Fast and Furious trailer. Yeah. Shit. Okay, so next week, Not of This Earth and Rock All Night. Uh, I, I haven't put them on our shared cough cough, but I will okay. make sure you, you get them. But that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, uh, the film Passengers. Paul Walker like sixteen-year-old girls. Uh, COVID exploitation. Google AI. I gotta say, I think this has been a good episode of the podcast. It's been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I'm I, I'm glad you said that. I thought it, but I didn't want to say it. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week. I am Bunny Williams. And on behalf of Jeannie and Natasha and Q and Eleanor and everybody else in the house, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathen. And you shabababs. Ah, the camera cut off. Yes, okay, top. And you poop?